Hi everyone, welcome to the webinar and workshop series conducted by TCS in lieu of the upcoming SCS exams happening in November 2024. Uh, as you know, my name is Nick. I'm the lead tutor for SCS at TCS. All right, so let's look at the session plan. Uh, today's session is going to be uh, quite short because I don't want to take a lot of your time. I know for a fact that you are um, engaged with uh, last minute uh, preparations. So I don't want to waste a lot of time. So with that in mind, I tried, I'm tried. i trying to wrap up uh, this session within uh, something like 30 minutes. So in the first part, I will um, you know share some uh, tips with you, uh, which uh, will definitely help you to maintain a positive attitude in the upcoming days, as well as on the day of your exam. Because if you are confident about your skill set, you are halfway through the examination. If you are confident about yourself, then you are well poised to uh, do the job of a senior finance manager in the most successful manner. And the and and in in the second part, I will be opening up for Q and A. All right. So uh, on the uh, on the day of the exam, as well as leading up to the exam, what are you supposed to do to develop a high level of confidence and uh, at the same time maintain the same level of confidence on the day of your exam? And in the fourth webinar exam prep, I highlighted uh, 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 you know certain points which you need to adhere to. What's the intention of developing confidence? So you need to maintain the same type of momentum. Uh, leading up to your exam as well as on the exam day. So uh, leading up to the exam, it's best that you rest your mind and body because if you are to do your job in the most successful manner, if you are to conduct evaluations uh, in the most successful manner and at the same time provide the best type of recommendations are, which, which are well justified, then you have to be well rested. Why is this the case? Because as I've mentioned throughout this uh, webinar and workshop series, uh, the examiner is trying to replicate a real-life corporate environment at your examination. So in a real-life corporate environment, if you are not well-rested, you are not um, uh, capable of carrying out your responsibilities in the most successful manner. So for instance, if you were up till late uh, day before your exam, um, uh, because you, you were engrossed with uh, preparations, if you were uh, you know, mentally as well as physically uh, experiencing fatigue, then it won't help you at your real examination because when you walk into the exam, you have to make sure that you leave out all types of unnecessary stressors, unnecessary issues, um, um, and you know walk into the exam with some type of positivity because if you're positive, then uh, as I mentioned earlier, you are halfway through your examination. So rest your mind and body. I do not want you to uh, conduct any preparations a day prior to the exam. Uh, these were highlighted within our eight week and three week study plans, irrespective of the study plan, which we have adhered to. I mentioned the fact that you need to take a break um, or start resting a day before your examination. So if your exam is on Thursday, you have to stop all your work by Tuesday. Take a day off on Wednesday, because if you do so, you are taking steps to rest your mind, rest your body which is uh, uh, going to reflect on your marks because uh, by resting your mind and body, you are trying to overcome stressful situations because it's it's not easy uh, conducting preparations. Uh, this is the last uh, uh, CMA examination and it's quite tough. Um, you need to know your theories as well as you need to work on your application skills. So, you know, handling all these things will lead to extreme levels of stress, extreme levels of pressure. So you need to take action to get rid of these, uh, uh, these, uh, these type of stresses or, 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 or uh, this type of pressure before you walk into your real exam. And uh, leading up to the exam in the upcoming days, um, it's best not to refer to any study material, mocks uh, or answer plans. If you really want, you can go through the answer plans. Other than that, I do not want you to attempt any mock exams, uh, especially uh, a day before your examination because um, Attempting mocks, you should be done with uh, mock attempts by now. Even if you are uh, thinking of attempting, you know, your last mock exam, because not all of you had uh, completed up until mock number six. Most of you had completed up until mock number five, but the uh, last exam um, um, is there uh, for you to complete. And, you know, if you are planning to complete mock number six, you have to do it tonight or by tomorrow. Uh, and, you know, uh, leading up to the exam, in the final two or three days, simply go through the answer plans which we have, uh, you know, shared with you. And if you had opted for the value pack, you have access to um, the suggested answers. And we mentioned the fact that you are supposed to develop answer plans based on these suggested answers. 
So uh, if you are yet to develop answer plans based on suggested answers, do it tonight itself. Uh, you can take tomorrow as well. However, uh, beyond Sunday, you should stop all your work. Don't focus your attention towards redeveloping answer plans. Don't focus your attention towards attempting mock exams. Uh, get everything done by Sunday because, um, you know, from Monday onwards until your exam, your only job should be to go through the answer plans uh, which we have shared with you. That's the best type of revision you can conduct uh, because when you do so, it's as if you are going through the entire syllabus. You are, you know, reminding yourself about recent information as well as how to work on your application. So the only thing which you need to do uh, after Monday or, or from Monday is the fact that you you are simply supposed to refer to the answer plans other than that uh, you are not supposed to do anything else and um, you know in these uh, final days it's best that you start thinking as sfm think that you're actually the sfm at rotomine uh, because uh, if you do so you will come up with the best type of evaluations because if you really think that you are working for this company um, you won't bring in irrelevant information because when marking your answer scripts i I understood the fact that um, most of you had relied on uh, information which does not appear on your pre-scene or within the scenario. Instead, you have come up with your own assumptions when uh, developing your arguments, uh, when coming up with your justifications. So if you think in terms of the SFM, if you think that you are actually this SFM of this company, then you will not come up with uh, answers which are based on irrelevant information, which is based on your own assumptions. Rather than that, you will always consider the information presented via each scenario, as well as what appears within your pre-scene. So it's best that you start thinking like the SFM. And on top of that, if you think that you are the SFM, then uh, you will come up with recommendations uh, which are well justified. And uh, it's quite normal for any student to feel some type of negativity closer to the exam, irrespective of uh, whether you have completed all your uh, uh, preparations. Even I, as a student, I, I, I used to, I was involved with self studies. So uh, I had to come up with a, a study plan of my own. And, you know, even after completing everything as per the study plan, closer, closer to the exam, I felt, you know, negative. I was always thinking whether I've done everything, whether I've covered all elements, whether I need to do something in addition to what I've done when conducting my preparations. So, you know, this happens because uh, of our brain. Our human brain is uh, developed in a way uh, that you are supposed to think about negativities because uh, if not, we wouldn't have walked out of caves as human beings. So, you know, the mind is constantly reminding you to fix all the problems as much as possible and closer to the exam, you will try to, even after you know adhering to our study plan, you will still try to go through theoretical elements. You'd still try to go through your uh, you know old notes or study texts and whatnot. All these uh, inefficiencies should be gotten rid of. Instead, if you want to do something, simply focus on reading through the answer plans. Other than that, don't do anything leading up to the exam. Because I've seen students, uh, you know, even after going through the uh, go going to an examination center, they will just 30 minutes before the examination, they will try to go through mock exams. They will try to read through uh, study texts uh, or, or, you know, revise theoretical elements. You should not do these things because you need to walk into your exam with an open mind. Because if you walk into the exam with an open mind, you will only rely on the information presented in your scenario as well as what appears within your pre-scene when developing your answers. Instead, right before the exam, if you try to go through a certain mock exam, you will try to structure your answers considering what you have gone through, considering um, uh, the mock exam which you have referred to. However, the information presented in your scenario at your real examination could be quite different to uh, what appeared within the mock exam which you uh, you know, uh, went through closer to the exam. So rather than trying to memorize the answers closer to the exam, your objective should be to understand the logic behind each answer, to understand how theoretical elements uh, should be brought in and how to work on your application skills by simply reading through the, or going through the answer plans, which we have shared with you. So uh, whenever you feel negative, Always remind yourself that you have done your homework. You can only do this if you have uh, completed uh, 
all the requirements as per our study plans. So if you have done it, even if you feel negative, simply remind yourself that you have done your homework and the fact that you just need 80 marks to pass out of 150. So as a percentage, it's just 54%. So you can easily achieve this if you are confident about your skill set. Uh, because if you had completed all six mock exams and conducted your revision uh, focused on each mock exam, which we have developed for you, then you need not worry about the outcome of your exam. Simply start believing in yourself because if you believe in yourself, then uh, your answers will be totally aligned with each requirement. You will come up with the best type of evaluations and recommendations. So if you feel negative, remind yourself that you just need 80 marks to pass. So even if you screw up half of your questions, you still can pass this examination. And on top of that, um, you know, uh, it's best um, that you remind yourself that uh, you have done your homework as well. And um, as I mentioned earlier, it's best that you uh, achieve a greater level of open-mindedness leading up to the exam. So with this in mind, you have to start relaxing uh, Monday onwards. So you are simply supposed to go through the answer plans. Other than that, don't do anything stressful because uh, closer to the exam, it's quite normal for you to feel stressed. So on top of this, I do not want you to uh, be exposed to further stressful situations. That's exactly why you are simply supposed to go through the answer plans and start start relaxing uh, so that uh, you achieve a greater level of uh, open-mindedness um, leading up to the examination. And um, during the exam, what are you expected to do to maintain the same type of confidence? Simply, the first step which you can take towards, uh, you know, being confident about your skill set, the first step uh, which you can take towards uh, managing uh, your stressors at the exam is to stick to our exam technique routine. So as per what I've highlighted in the third webinar, uh, answering technique, you are supposed to allocate five minutes to read through the entire scenario. Then um, uh, you are supposed to allocate something like 25 to 30 minutes to develop the answer plans focused on all subtasks which appear within a section. So you are spending 25 to 30 minutes to uh, you know plan out your answer or structure your answer. Once you have uh, an answer plan at your disposal, the remaining 25 to 30 minutes should be uh, allocated towards uh, expanding your answer plan in paragraph form. So for each uh, valid point, you need to develop a paragraph. So I've highlighted all these things in depth in the third webinar and via the master classes. So um, if you watch them, you know what I'm talking about. And I hope you would have uh, practiced or adhered to these techniques when uh, practicing uh, the six mock exams, which we have developed for you. If so, by now, you would have mastered your answering and time management techniques. So at the exam, stick to the same methodology because you are already aware uh, of uh, how to structure your answers, how to manage your time, because uh, you were expected to practice them when attempting the six mock exams. And on top of that, if you stick to this technique, it's as if you are taking a break every 30 minutes. What am I talking about? So as per our study plan, you are supposed to allocate five minutes to read, uh, 30 minutes to develop the answer, 25 to 30 minutes to plan, and then the remaining 30 minutes should be allocated towards typing. So you are not trying to multitask. Instead, you are first reading, then planning, then typing. So when it comes to typing, there's absolutely nothing for you to think because you have already planned out your answer. You already have an answer plan at your disposal. So when it comes to typing, it's not about thinking what you should include within the answer. Instead, it's simply a matter of expanding each answer point. So when it comes to typing, actually speaking, you are taking a break. So this is going to be extremely beneficial for you because as I mentioned earlier, this is a stressful examination. So it's best that you take a break um, uh, uh, in each task, which will help you immensely to manage your stressors. Because uh, if, if you adhere to a different uh, answering technique, then throughout the uh, 60 minutes, which is allocated for a certain section, you will be working, you will be trying to think, you will be trying to plan out your answer. Instead, if you stick to this methodology, you are allocating five minutes uh, to read, 30 minutes to plan and 30 minutes to type. And whilst typing, you are resting your brain. So stick to the exam technique routine. And even if you stick to the exam technique routine, uh, you might feel stressed at your exam because you will see certain, uh, you know, one or two subtasks uh, which appear to be hard. So, you know, these type of subtasks are 
uh, appearing within your uh, examination uh, because uh, the examiner intends to create a stressful situation with the intention of throwing you off your exam strategy. Because as the senior finance manager of this company and as a management accountant, because after completing this uh, exam and, and passing it, you will become a management accountant. So in order to become a management accountant, you have to have a good knowledge of what's uh, highlighted within your syllabus. You need to understand how to apply this knowledge considering uh, a scenario faced by uh, a, a certain company. And on top of that, you need to have the capability to manage a stressful situation. So the exam is not only testing your knowledge, your application skills, the exam is also testing whether you can handle or tackle stressful situations. If so, you deserve to become a management accountant. Uh, if so, you are well poised to do a job of a senior finance manager. So with this intention, with the intention of checking whether you can manage your, uh, uh, manage a stressful situation, the examiner has included, uh, examiner will definitely include two or three subtasks uh, which appear to be hard or where you'd struggle with uh, identifying or, or, or understanding the requirement clearly. So you can avoid all these issues if you stick to our answering technique. Although when you are under exam stress, something which is easy might appear as a hard requirement. So whenever you feel stressed, I've uh, you know highlighted what you need to do in uh, the fourth webinar, exam prep. I said that you need to switch off, you, you need to take steps to switch off your amygdala. So as I, I highlighted all these things in depth in the fourth webinar, I'll uh, you know uh, share this uh, information in a nutshell. So when you are uh, you know uh, developing answers at your exam, you are supposed to utilize your prefrontal cortex. That's the front part of your brain. So if you are thinking through the prefrontal cortex, uh, you are engaged with rational decision making. So you are not being emotional. Instead, you are considering. You are supposed to consider the information presented and develop the best type of answers. And when conducting your evaluations, you will not only you know, look at uh, the advantages, you will also look at disadvantages and whatnot. And when providing recommendations, you will provide justified, well-justified recommendations, and you will come up with uh, suggestions uh, which makes the life of board members easy when it comes to implementing your recommendations. So in order to do all these things in a successful manner, you need to think through your prefrontal cortex. However, whenever you are exposed to a, a stressful situation, your brain functions will shift from your prefrontal cortex to something called the amygdala, which is an extremely small part of our brain, which gives us the fight or flight response. The flight response is a situation where the brain tells you to get out of a stressful situation. So at the exam, whenever you are stressed, when the brain tells you to get out of a stressful situation, students have a tendency to uh, provide half-hearted answers or you know, simply uh, you know, uh, provide answers in single lined sentences. Why is this the case? Because uh, you are trying to, you know, get out of a stressful situation. So with that in mind, you are trying to develop answers in a rush. So all those 60 minutes are allocated for each section, especially towards uh, section number three. I've seen students, uh, you know, uh, taking up just uh, or utilizing just uh, 30 to 40 minutes. Why is this the case? Because you are uh, under stress. Your brain is asking you to get out of a stressful situation. So you'd uh, try to, you know, finish off the exam as fast as possible. So that's a, uh, you know, a flight response. And a fight response is a situ situation where uh, you will try to somehow, you know, uh, force yourself and, you know, uh, you know, overcome a stressful situation. So whenever you are exposed to stress, when you try to fight the stressful situation, if you try to keep, you know, moving forward, irrespective of uh, 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 or, or, or without taking uh, steps to overcome a stressful situation, then this leads to extreme levels of stress. Ex extreme levels of stress will lead to brain freeze. So brain freeze is a situation where you, are, you, you try to think, but nothing comes into your head. And I, I hope you would have, uh, you know, experienced these things when attempting our six mock exams, uh, because, uh, uh, you know, when you are attempting each mock under exam conditions, um, you know, when, when you are exposed to these type of stressful situations, when you are exposed to brain freeze, then you can take steps to overcome these uh, stressors when conducting your preparation. So that's exactly why we have uh, given you the opportunity to attempt all our mock exams under exam conditions. So if you have done so, you know what I'm talking about. So 
there's absolutely no point of trying to fight a stressful situation. Instead, you need to take steps to switch off your amygdala. And the only way to do so is by focusing on your breathing. So before you start, uh, you know, uh, focusing on your breathing, uh, drink some water. It will help you calm your nerves uh, because it's best to hydrate yourself. Uh, it will, uh, uh, you know, help your blood flow as well. And, and you know, this oxygen intake will help your brain function. So drink some water. However, if you're attempting the exam at home um, or if you're attempting the exam in certain um, um, exam centers, you won't be allowed to uh, take a water bottle or have a water bottle with you. If so, you can't do this. Um, so if, if you're allowed, then drink some water. And on top of that, after doing this, start uh, you know taking steps to switch off your amygdala, which is to close your eyes and breathe slowly for two minutes. When breathing, as I mentioned in the fourth webinar exam prep, you are supposed to inhale through your nose and exhale through your mouth. When inhaling, count to three slowly. And when exhaling, count to three slowly. So by doing so, you are recal recalibrating your brain. You are shifting back brain functions from your amygdala to the prefrontal cortex. So this is the only technique out there. Um, if you want to overcome a stressful situation, this is the only technique out there. You can only switch off your amygdala. You can only get rid of a fight or flight response by simply focusing on your breathing. So inhale through your nose, count to three slow counts, then um, you know exhale through your mouth. And when doing so, count to three slowly once more. So when you do it, it's as if you are refreshing your brain, uh, which will help you overcome a stressful situation. So you might think that you're wasting your time. You're wasting two minutes of your precious time, which is not the case. There's absolutely no point of trying to fight a stressful situation. Instead, you need to take action to switch off your amygdala. If so, it's as if you're actually gaining time because rather than fighting, uh, you know, trying to fight a stressful situation, which leads to brain freeze. And when you're exposed to brain freeze, you're uh, you, you you won't be able to come up with an answer for something like five to 10 minutes. So rather than wasting five to 10 minutes of your time by trying to fight a stressful situation, it's best that you, um, you know, take steps to focus on your breathing just for two minutes with the intention of refreshing your brain and getting your uh, brain functions back to your prefrontal cortex. And uh, it's best, most students who uh, end up gaining good marks at the ICS exam, uh, they take a two minute break between tasks. So let's assume you are done with section number one. Uh, before you uh, you know, start reading through section number two, before you develop the answer plan, before you type out the answer, you are supposed to take a two minute break again, focus on your breathing for two minutes, inhale through your nose, exhale through your mouth. When inhaling, count to three slowly. And when exhaling, count to three slowly again. And when you do this, it's as if you are refreshing the brain as if you are taking a good break before each section, because uh, although the exam is trying to replicate a real life corporate environment, in a real life environment, if you are exposed to a stressful situation, you can walk off um, uh, from your cubicle, you can have a chat with one of your friends, uh, or, or you can you know smoke or have a cup of coffee or tea. All these things uh, will lead to a situation where you are avoiding a stressful situation, but at the exam, you can't do so. You have to sit in one place uh, three hours at a stretch and be exposed to uh, stressful situations uh, uh, throughout these three hours. So whenever you are you know, being exposed to stress, take steps to switch off your amygdala. And uh, before each section, it's best that you take two minutes to refresh your brain uh, so that you come up with the best type of answers at your real examination. And whenever you feel stressed, always remind yourself that uh, you just need 80 marks to pass uh, which indicates that even if you screw up uh, half of the subtasks of your entire paper, you still can pass. And on top of that, um, uh, you always remind yourself that you have done your homework. Because um, if you look at uh, individuals uh, who are well prepared uh, for, to, to face their SES exam, at the examination, uh, there's a tendency for us to think that we are not providing accurate answers, even when we are developing the best type of answers. So I've dealt with students uh, who end up calling me right after the examination and telling me, okay, when I was attempting mock exams, uh, you know, I did a good job, but, uh, you know, when uh, at my real examination, I think I screwed up everything uh, to later find out when the results are out, 
uh, the same student who was complaining about uh, his or her performance ends up getting more than 100 marks when the pass mark is just 80. So there's absolutely no point of worrying at your examination, absolutely no point of doubting yourself. Why would you doubt yourself? Because your brain constantly keeps telling you to fix all the problems. So with the intention of fixing all the problems, you tend to overthink at the exam. And when you tend to overthink, you will always start doubting the quality of your answers. You will always feel that you have screwed up your answer. There's absolutely no point of, uh, whenever you feel this, there's absolutely no point of pondering on these points. Absolutely no point of, um, you know, um, uh, um, you know, doubting yourself. Instead, you're, you need to take steps to create or generate a high level, level of confidence in your mind because if you believe in yourself, as I mentioned earlier, you will come up with uh, good answers. So don't worry. Let's assume you think that you screwed up section number one and now you are in section number two. So there's absolutely no point of worrying about what went wrong in section number one because can you change the past? You can't. Can you go back to section number one? Once uh, the 60 minutes uh, is up, you cannot go back, go back to section number one. So there's absolutely no point of thinking about uh, something which appeared within the uh, previous task or previous section or, or trying to fix an issue um, uh, which you think was there uh, in your answer pertaining to the previous uh, section or the previous task. Instead, uh, you need to focus your attention towards what you are doing right now. And on top of that, there's absolutely no point of thinking if you're in section number two, there's absolutely no point of thinking about what will appear in section number three, because as I mentioned earlier, you cannot do anything to change your past and you can't do anything to change your future. The only thing you can do is to change your present situation. And that is to focus your attention towards uh, the question at hand, the information presented in your scenario, the relevant information uh, which appears within your pre-scene. Other than that, you need not think about your uh, previous sections and uh, the sections you are yet to address. All right, so uh, be confident and at your examination, give your best shot. If you are to give your best shot, you have to be open-minded. You have to be well-rested. You need to manage your stress level. So now you know what you need to do. I've highlighted the same things in the fourth webinar. So closer to the exam, I wanted to remind you uh, what you need to uh, uh, take, the type of action you need to take to manage a stressful situation, to um, uh, manage your affairs uh, in a successful manner at your examination. So simply put, uh, in the uh, days leading up to the exam, you I, I don't mind you attempting mock exams until Sunday, which is tomorrow. I don't mind you redeveloping answer plans until Sunday. But from Monday, you need to you know uh, take steps to uh, rest your mind and body. The only thing which you need to do with regards to preparations is to simply go through the answer plans. Other than that, don't do anything else because uh, you need to achieve a high level of confidence and open-mindedness before you walk into the exam. And at the exam, stick to the exam technique routine. If you do so, it's as if you every 30 minutes you are taking a break. And whenever you, are, you feel stressed, uh, focus on your breathing and come out of this stressful situation um, and shift your brain functions from your amygdala to the prefrontal cortex and at the exam, always, when, whenever you feel negative, whenever you start doubting yourself, always remind yourself that you have done your homework and you simply need 80 marks to pass. You need not get full marks. You just need 54% um, to pass this examination. So give your best shot. Believe in yourself. And if you take steps to uh, uh, start building confidence leading up to the exam at your real examination, you will be um, actually confident. And if you're confident about your skill sets, you will never doubt yourself. You will never doubt the quality of your answers. Um, and if so, you will gain extremely good marks at your real examination. So that's exactly what our previous students who sat for SES exams, which happened in August 2024, achieved. We achieved a 97% pass rate. And most students who uh, adhered to our study plan and practiced what I you know, highlighted right now a while back uh, with the intention of managing exam stressors were capable of achieving more than 100 marks when the past mark was just 80. So I hope you'd keep practicing these uh, techniques which I highlighted, uh, the last minute tips which I highlighted leading up to the exam and on the day of your exam. So having said that, let's move on to the q and I'm going to pause the recording. 
All right, folks. So thank you very much for those questions. I think we spent about an hour uh, addressing your concerns. So uh, thank you very much. I, I love it when uh, you guys are asking a lot of questions. I expected you guys to uh, you know, ask all these questions uh, in the webinars and workshops, but um, it's good that, um, you know, at the very last, even at the very last moment, you clarify all your doubts, uh, which will lead to a better level of confidence um, before you walk into the exam. So having said that, if you want to contact us, you can do it via our website, which is www.studyattcs.com. Visit our website and click on the contact button and drop your message. Our admin staff will get in touch with uh, you via email uh, during office hours. And you can email us at infatstudyattcs.com or WhatsApp us on this number. And I invite you to follow us on our social media handles, especially YouTube and TikTok, because uh, the recorded versions of the webinars and workshops uh, are uploaded onto our YouTube handle on a weekly basis. And on top of that, uh, via TikTok, you will gain access to a set of videos, which is a good mind map of your entire pre-scene. So, in the uh, final days leading up to your exam, keep watching these uh, set of uh, TikTok videos so that you constantly keep reminding yourself about what appears within your uh, pre scene document. And on top of that, we have already shared uh, a pre scene mind map with you, a PDF uh, uh, with you uh, via the WhatsApp group. So I will reshare it for those who had uh, joined the WhatsApp group recently. And if you're yet to join the WhatsApp group, simply visit our website and you know, click, uh, go to the SES page and click on this button to join the SES WhatsApp discussion forum. And um, having said that, it brings us to the end of the webinar and workshop series conducted in lieu of uh, sessions happening in November 2024. I hope you are almost done with your preparations. And some of you, three or four students are already completed or, or done with their uh, six mock exams. If you're one such individual, kudos to you. You simply need to work on redeveloping answer plans. And uh, I prefer it if you can stop all your work by Sunday and solely focusing uh, focus your attention towards uh, going through the answer plans uh, or, or revising answer structures and at the same time, relaxing yourself. So, you know, I believe in you. I expect you to believe in yourself as well. You know what to do to manage your uh, uh, time at the exam. You know how to structure your answers. You know how to manage your stress levels. You have practiced all these things under exam conditions. So you are done with your uh, homework. Uh, you just need to get 80 marks to pass. So it's going to be a walk in the park. Believe in yourself whenever you feel negative. I highlighted certain things which you are expected to do to overcome these uh, negative or stressful situations. And at the exam as well, um, whenever you are feeling negative or whenever you are feeling stressed, Practice the same uh, stress management techniques which we discussed in uh, today's workshop. So I wish you all the very best and, uh, you know, uh, make sure to share your results uh, with us via the WhatsApp group after the results are out. Thank you very much. Take care and the best of luck.